Good morning. Good morning. It's a lovely morning. It's not morning. It's afternoon if we're listening to this, right? Yeah. 3 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Central. That's how it works. That's how time zones work. No? It was flipped, I think. 3 no. p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Oh, mother effort. Yes, it is. Ah, why do I constantly get that wrong? I'm an idiot. Ugh, getting old. That's why we had to bring in some young blood today. That sounds so weird. Nah, we didn't make it weird. We're not going to make it weird. No, our guest today, uh, I had an absolute blast talking with him. His name is Wyatt Olaf. You might know him from It, the new one, second um, highest grossing opening weekend for an R-rated film. Um, amazing film. And he was also in Guardians of the Galaxy. He uh, he was on the show today, and young man, I, I got a lot of respect for him. I got to say that. He's a really cool guy. I think you guys are going to be very surprised by our conversation. I mean, uh, we got deep. We had a good time. We laughed. Uh, he's, a good, he's a good guy. Good young man. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Wyatt Olaf. nice it's fun it's good yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right i love seeing people's reaction to the music in the beginning because yeah. some people are just like i like it but can i move my head to this is that okay <laughs> i mean i i move my head to music all the time what, what kind of music do you listen to um, usually uh it kind of depends like i had this 80s thing back in 2016 because oh wow uh because of it i kind of started listening to 80s music because it yeah. takes place in the 80s um, so I had that whole fantasy, fan, not fantasy, but attraction to 80s music. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I still love 80s music, but I don't listen to it as much. Um, right, right. I don't know. I yeah. just listen to weird stuff, soundtracks. and. Oh, I listen to a, a wide variety of things. Oh, just a heads up. Uh, just keep this uh, right here. Yeah, yeah. Close. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, same, man. I think uh, recently within the last – ever since I moved out to L.A., uh, especially with streaming music. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. My taste in music has expanded primarily. In high school, no, let's take it way back. Okay, Ace of Bass. Do you know them? No. Okay. <laughs> Am I too young to be on here? No, no. You're listening to okay. '80s music. <laughs> hey, what, what, you, Michael? What year was Ace of Bass? Ace of Bass. Yeah. Let me try. Yeah, yeah. Because that was when I was like, I don't know, maybe like ten, I think, eleven. I heard them. I was like, ooh. All that you want is another baby. Do you know that song? No. no. All right. I wish I, I, wish I could. <laughs> that one. Right it now. looks like that one was ninety three. Ninety three. Ninety three. Okay. Uh, so I'm not as much into the nineties part of music. Right. You're more. I'm. I'm before that. Before that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that was like one of my first songs I I listened to, and I was like, oh, I, I kind of. The first this. song you listened to, or I just remember that? like oh, uh, listening remember. to it okay. and like, oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but then as I got through like, um the 90s grunge when i heard nirvana's teen spirit i was like oh that's me this is me this is who i like yep. like uh bush uh soundgarden uh are you know those bands yes, right yeah, okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know those i know the more popular ones from the 90s but yeah. not i mean do, i could be yeah. no no it's okay no dude this is so interesting talking to somebody um who is younger, but i i don't I, there's always like a, some kind of like negative connotation with that you know what mm-hmm. i mean but i Sometimes it's cool meeting someone like you because I met you at the premiere right, of yeah. Avengers, yeah. and you just seemed like a cool guy. Thank and you. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, yeah. Like it just got a good vibe from you. And usually, I can tell whenever, like, oh, I can probably carry a conversation, or this guy seems like cool, right. even though you were young. I was like, oh, this this should be interesting. You're young. I don't know what we can talk about or what we will hey, talk you about. Can talk about anything. Really. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with anything. So it's all good. But like, and then my so my taste of music. Um, I heard Avenged Sevenfold. Do you mm-hmm. know them? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Sounds familiar. Second Heartbeat, and I was listening, listening to a bunch of like AFI, punk, mm-hmm. My Chemical Romance, a little emo stuff, right. and I loved it. And then when I heard this more hardcore, screaming, like metal, I was like, oh, this is like when I was 14 and 15, like yep. I wanted just to be out of my house all the time and just be <laughs> independent. I grew up in a very like disciplined household, right. okay. and they 
super supportive parents, super disciplined. They loved me to death, but I just wanted to be always independent. Right. And I felt like that music was like the fire inside of me that just wanted to like get out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I listened to a bunch of metal after that. But yeah, after moving out, I started listening to more like softer stuff, bright eyes, more soundtrack stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I feel like I've like – accidentally skipped a phase i don't know if it's just because my generation is so obsessed with ironic humor but it's just we don't like listen to like the hard rock at this age anymore i don't know if it's just me but like i don't i guess it's more of like a rap kind of thing now Mm. like that seems to be the most popular thing i'm not really sorry i'm not i'm not really a fan of modern rap um well it depends because there are some good artists i just don't listen to rap all that much yeah um Usually I listen to different stuff and I, uh, sometimes my friends give me different things, but yeah. Not a fan it's, of mumble rap. No. Uh, there's certain rappers that I'm just like, I'm not a fan of for a couple of reasons. Mm-hmm. And the first one being just a personal taste, like Takashi, that guy, this, the rainbow oh. rapper. You know who I'm talking yeah. about? I, just not a fan of your music. Some of it like, okay, that's okay, but just not a fan. The second part is... After watching a childish uh, or Donald Glover's video, yeah. uh, "This Is America," mm-hmm. okay, that that is music. Right. That yes. that is the when you're making music. I feel not only does it sound good, is it entertaining, but there's also the message behind it. Yeah, you've hit the trifecta right there. Mm-hmm. Right, you know what I mean? That's what that's what music should be. I just there are people like I admire, like especially musicians. I admire them, but I don't listen to their music. Yeah, Childish Gambino or Donald Glover, he is the person I look up to the most. He is so talented in every single way. And that music video just boosts him further up that talented chart for me. I mean, he's crazy talented. He understands who he is, I Mm -hmm. think. And, and that comes with time and experience. Yeah. And also he's worked hard. Yes. He had a great head start in life and he's, he's acknowledged that, but Mm -hmm. he's used it to his advantage. And that's what I respect about it. Right. He just didn't squander it. You know what I mean? And, the messages and with which he's um, sharing with people, I think, is extremely valuable. Um, so yeah, that's why a lot of I think a mo- uh, I I don't know what the percentage is, but mm-hmm. the stuff I've seen, I'm just not a fan of like certain rap or even other rock artists right. or whatever. I'm just like, okay, it's cool, but yeah, what are you doing different? <laughs> you know, right. Um, speaking of your generational ironic humor, mm-hmm. uh, memes have become. <laughs> Within the last few years, especially. Yeah. I'm just astounded how quickly a meme becomes popular. Right. And how quickly it disappears. Right. I think there's a certain percentage of people on the internet who don't go outside at all. And I think those are the kinds of people who either (laughs) start it or just hate it from the start. I think there are some ones that I can find funny until obviously they die a couple of days later. But some other ones just aren't funny to me. Yeah. Um. And it, it kind of depends. Like, I don't laugh at normal jokes anymore. Well, I do, but I, I mean, it's rare, <laughs> that kind of thing. Same, man. Yeah. Like, for me to, like, when I'm watching a TV show, mm-hmm. if I'm going to laugh out loud, you got to do something special. Yeah. For me, it's hard for me just to laugh, you know? Right. Uh, me and my brothers have a very unique sense of humor. Mm-hmm. With them, we could laugh. <laughs> Like the like ninety percent of the time together and not finish sentences but understand what we're laughing about. Right. You yeah. Know? Do you have any siblings? I have one brother. I have an older brother. Oh, um, okay. We don't really have anything in common. Okay. But how old is he? He's seventeen now. And you're fourteen. Fourteen. I turned fifteen in July. So yeah. That will change with age. Yes. My brother. I'm the oldest. Mm-hmm. My well, the one I live with. He's the middle brother. There is a six year difference. Oh. Wow. Uh, five or six years. And then our youngest brother, the same thing. He's a year younger than him. Okay. So growing up, we really – we loved each other and everything. We kind of got along, you know, but we never really right. hung out or talked. But as we got older, that changed. Our bond now, stronger than ever. Yeah, and that's kind of what I'm excited for because we're obviously going through these phases where we're, like, not wanting to be next to each other. Yeah. And that happens a lot, but – we still like to – sometimes we'll, like, bond over a certain thing and then I won't want to do that thing and then my brother gets mad at me. But I think the best part about this age for me is that I'm probably the tallest person in my close family right now. 
No, I am the tallest person in my close That's family. That's so unfair. It's always the youngest dude. Right. My brothers are like this. <laughs> six one, six two. Hi, five eight. What? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I I don't even know what happened for me. I just I'm happy because then I can size up to my brother. So when we do fight, I I have a more more of a chance of winning. You know what, sir? <laughs> my brothers used to say the same thing. Right. Your older brother's got the the mind games on you. Mm-hmm. That's an experience. Well. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Because okay. I'm I'm used to my brother's <laughs> shenanigans, okay. and I think I'm I'm getting used to them. We're obviously maturing. I yeah. hope, um, and I'm hoping we get that bond that you say that you guys have. Will. Um, Will. But I think I feel like there was a time where we really, really didn't like each other, and it's getting better. Good. Good. So. Hey, man. I think majority of siblings go through that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's very rare when they don't. You mm-hmm. know. Um, but. That's the beautiful thing about people in general. Let's even take it broader. Mm-hmm. People change, you know. Yeah. Family dynamics are complicated. A lot of times you you find out, oh my gosh, so many other people have had the same problems I've had with my family, and that makes you feel better. And you realize, oh, I can get over it, or we can work it out. And sometimes you realize, you know what? This is who my brother is, or this is who my family member is. I can't change them, yeah. but I can always love them and support them as long as they're trying to be positive and yeah. just accept certain things that they do that I'm like, oh, that's them. Right. Can't change that. They're their own person. They're on their own journey. Um, and I think that helps you grow as a person too. Yeah. I'm, I know I'm very lucky with my brother's situation and sibling situation. And throughout my extended family, it's not the same thing like that though. Yeah. You know, there's some, you know, animosity mm-hmm. or – uh, there was animosity, but now it's just like, you know what? You live your life. I'll live my life. Yeah. Best of luck to you. Best of luck to you, you know, my, my nephews and nieces and all that stuff, but I don't think we could ever interact, you know? Right. Um, it got so serious. Yeah, <laughs> wow, that, that, that took a, quite the turn. Really it happens. Fast. Yeah, it, I know, yeah. right? It yeah. happens. That's just all my conversations. Just, it just goes up and down. Up I and can't down. whistle, but. You can't whistle? No, well, I can, but not well. Let's hear it. No, okay. I mean, I can't. You're like, I like, you're like, please don't. Well, I no, I, I'm always on like calls with my friends, like online, and my friend always whistles, and it's the most painful thing to my ears. Oh, on the phone he whistles. Well, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, weird friend. Well, like we're in like group chat calls, like on Discord or whatever, and he'll just like be whistling, and then we're like, can you not? And he just keeps whistling, and it's like. Yeah. yeah, driving you crazy. Right. It's like that um, mosquito uh, – is it like a mosquito sound or something? It's like raises <sighs> in frequency. Oh, my gosh. What ha- something happened to me the other day. I forgot who I was with. There was some video they were watching, mm-hmm. and it had this high-frequency sound, and I did something my dad used to do, and it, it was like such a dad moment for me, and I was like – what is that? What is going on? Hey, what is that? Turn it off. You know, like immediately I snapped and I was like, it was like bugging me so much. So I, I, the annoyance, right. I, I support you in that. And yeah. I, I don't know who your friend is, but, uh, sir, you got to stop. Got to stop. Got to stop. I don't Emil, know what, what's his name? Emil. Emil. He's French. Um, he, and he's French. And he's French. <laughs> he's got a double stop. And he's French. And he's French. So disrespectful. I'm just kidding. Oh. My French listeners, it's good. It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's just a, a joke. joke. People don't get offended so easily. I have to say that so many times on the show, so I don't get say like it's a joke. Yeah, because I love going. I'm prime time now. I'm rich. Yeah. I do whatever I want, but I have to always say I'm kidding. Okay. Otherwise, right. we get the hate mail. That's um, that's another thing I think uh, with kind of I don't know if it's millennial humor or Generation Z. I think it's kind of like a mix of the two right now. But it's like it's not funny unless it's edgy. Mm. To me, at least, sometimes it's like it needs to be edgier kind of thing. Yeah. But, um, like, obviously, there's still good jokes, but I think you kind of get numb to the other stuff. Can I add on? Can Can I grow on to that t- yeah. saying? I think it's funny when it's truthful. Mm-hmm. I love busting my brother's balls and vice versa. We make fun of each other, like, really good. Why? Yeah. Because there's a certain amount of truth to that. Right. If I went up to my brother and I was like, ha, you're ugly, he'd be like, uh, first of all, he's not ugly. He's like the most good looking one of us, right. uh, William. Okay. Um, and if I said that to him, he'd be like, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, but if I went up to him, like, uh, you're, you're so good looking, you're starting to look like a woman, William. You know, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? like that's, see, right. that's funny. Right. And, and then it's like, I think it, and it bothers me when it's like, listen, 
if you don't like a joke or if you don't like a TV show, all you got to do is change the channel. You don't mm -hmm. need – you know what I mean? If it's if it's – if it's malicious or harmful intent, I feel like a lot of people who do that nowadays make jokes that are like just being malicious for the sake of being malicious. Right, yeah. And it's not funny. Mm -hmm. it, I, gets, I, it gets to a I, point. Yeah, I'm like, oh, it's a little mosquito. I don't need to. I don't need to interact. Yeah, it's that's just, just ignore it. It's like right. a, a negative troll online. Mm -hmm. If you interact with that person, it, it just. That's, I mean, that's, that's I, the whole point, especially with people who like hate or whatever. Mm. It's. All they all they want is attention, really. Yeah, I've, I've I've figured out with a lot of the people that follow me for some reason. I think I've responded to one or two negative comments, but like I've acknowledged that I'm responding to them, and I acknowledge that's somewhat of a defeat. And, but I'm also kind of expanding on that and saying that like here's your attention or whatever, and now that people notice that that gets them noticed, more people are trying to hate so that yeah. they can get attention yeah and i think it's just annoying more than anything because then you then you actually acknowledge that and they're like oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so so sorry like yeah. they were joking and then i know that happens a lot with people yeah with, with especially with really famous people mm -hmm. the person will call them out and be like well dude i was just joking i was just joking you know it's like it's kind of sad you know yeah. and, and then it makes me think like what is this person going through their life that they have to do this because mm -hmm. a happy person doesn't do that right a happy person just wants to make other people happy, you know. Um, it's really cool that you're aware of that at this age, you know. I can't – I I don't know how aware of it I was well, when I was here. Yeah, Nirvana and – Yeah, when I'm listening to <laughs> – and I'm working in my parents' restaurant and acting all the time, so. <laughs> oh, my God. I do, have you done a lot of theater at all? No. Uh, I did my first grade school plays and musicals, nice. but – I haven't really done anything past that. And those were mandatory, so I didn't really have a choice. Yeah. Um, I was going to go into, like, my school's theater play, and then they were doing Pride and Prejudice. And oh, cool. I was going to audition for it, and then I didn't because their audition thing was really weird. Like, they had, like, 30, like, 10, 20 pages of scripts, and, like, you had to pick a character from that script and pick a scene and then you had to perform in front of everyone and it didn't really make a lot of sense and I only went over it like once and I didn't even pick what character I wanted to do. Oh, that's very interesting. And I got really nervous and then um, I told my mom that I didn't want to audition for it, which she got <laughs> mad at me. And um, <laughs> there, so I needed something to do after school because I'm uh, – there's my mom uh, – because I'm not busy. And yeah. um, they, there's there was tech crew at my school, and so I was like, "Can I just do that?" And she's like, <sighs> <laughs> and then I was like, "So that means I can do tech crew, right?" right? And she's she just didn't respond. So I went to tech crew that day. That's good. Um, I haven't done tech crew since. Okay. Um, instead, I do tennis now. So that, all right, that's okay. That's fine. I that's mean, fine. <laughs> that's my legacy for freshman year. Um. Trust me, it'll. It gets you will worse. barely no. You'll no. barely remember the stuff you've done. You know, I think it's important though that you are doing something after school. Mm -hmm. That's something that, <clears throat> at the time when I was in high school and college, just to kind of give you a brief rundown, I was in drama since eighth grade, mm -hmm. and my high school, starting at ninth grade, had a very intense drama program where every day, Monday through Friday, we do our rehearsals at from three to five. And usually I'd go home or when I'd go home, I'd go help my parents in the restaurant. Right. And I'd find time to do homework. Somewhere in there. So – and then the summertime, I would audition for Shakespeare in the Park, like the rep companies that would mm -hmm. come in. Sometimes they would give me a line. Sometimes they'd just have me like do the servant job. Do you know what I mean? So that's what I would do during the summer. So I was always involved in something, mm -hmm. always busy. I never just – I rarely had days to lay around and do anything right. or do nothing. Excuse me. And that followed into college because I was a commuter, so I would save money. I lived at home, went to college, and then helped my parents in the store, would find time to do homework, worked at this college. And at nights, they had rehearsals from like 7 to 10, 7 to 11. Right. Sucked. It felt like it sucked. You know what I mean? But I realized that prepped me for going and moving into L.A. Yeah. Where I knew how time uh, management Where did worked. you live before? Oh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, and – Learning how to time manage all those things mm -hmm. prepped me for moving out to LA, and I became so like, okay, this is A, B, C. This is what I need to do, 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 do. And without all that, without the discipline from my parents, without the miserable times I've had, right? Oh, 
I meant to do quotations, quotations but you but got too I, I got energetic. Too excited. Yeah. I keep hitting like every radio <laughs> thing I go on. I hit I hit the mic. So I know there. Are, I I keep adjusting this one. I don't know why. I think because I keep changing. Anyway, but it's really prepped me, and so it's good that you have something to do after school. Well, uh, not anymore. Because oh, you're the season ended. <laughs> oh, wait, <laughs> wait, wait. The season. Uh, the... It's a it's school, uh, f- uh, school sport. So the tennis season ended. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So well, now you're just yeah, chilling. Yeah, but okay. now it is the end of the school year. It's close to the end of the school year. We get out at the end of May. Yeah. And then we go back at the end of August. So it's a little earlier than other schools. But I, I do agree with you. I find it important that you learn discipline. I'm <laughs> I, I'm not very close to learning, mastering discipline yet. Um, that's what my mom's here for. She's really <laughs> trying to keep me on schedule and yeah. keep – keeping me going and every time i she says like maybe you should do this and i ignore her and then she says it again she's like that reminder that you're gonna have to do this yourself one day yes and i'm not gonna be here to do it for you and so i think it's really important that she does that for me and i'm glad she does and i think that's again i'm talking about the generation but a lot of people say like "Ugh, i hate my parents and that's a thing that happens with everyone right you're frustrated with them yeah but every every time I have like an argument with my parents, yeah, I always like at the end I always say like I love you because you really never know what's gonna happen. And sometimes I think of my life as like a movie script or whatever. And uh, interior house, a meteor hits. I don't know. It's it's stupid. It's crazy. But it's always good to let them know how much you appreciate the work they do for you. Yes. And I'm happy that i realized that now instead of later a hundred percent dude so. uh, my respect for you has gone up tremendously thank you <laughs> uh that is always keep that mm-hmm. and you'll realize that the discipline that she's trying to teach you your parents are mm-hmm. is crucial but you'll realize the the weight of the stakes of it all later on in life you don't you won't realize it now it's impossible yeah, right and it's such a weird thing to think about, especially if somebody told me when I was 14 or 15 about that. I would kind of understand them maybe, but then I, I really wouldn't have a full grasp on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's kind of a dark thing to think about, but mm-hmm. it's the truth. Um, everyone dies, and yeah. you never know when people will die. And um, I wish you and your parents a very long life, but that eventually, you know, you know, it will. that time will come. Yeah. And it's hard to think about, but... When you appreciate every single day with them and you you don't take anything for granted, when that time comes, you will look back on everything and you go, you know what, I, I'm i glad I didn't take anything for granted yeah. and, they, and we lived a full life together and I learned as much as I could from them mm-hmm. and I'm thankful for that. And that's a, that's a thing I do. It's like my parents will say, do you want to – we're going to go to the store. Do you want to walk with us? And I'll be like, uh, I'm all right. And then I'll sit down and then I'll be like – <laughs> I, I want to walk with them and then I'll go walk with them. Cause there's, there's, I always think like ahead in time. I'm like, what if later I'm like, Oh, I regret not going on that walk or whatever. Maybe I learned something important on that walk. Maybe there'll be an idea that sparks the rest of my right. life from there. And I just go. And I think those are important opportunities to take. Absolutely. So, so when this airs, um, it would have been three weeks since this incident happened. I thought I'd share this with you since we're on the, the topic. Mm-hmm. Um, He's okay. He can move his legs, and he's in rehab right now. But my dad broke his spine. Oh. He fell off a ladder, and I had to fly back to Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And it was the worst week of my life thus far. I'm very sorry. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. But um, and well, and there was a couple times. It's planning for the worst. Planning uh, I won't be able to see my dad again, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and so it's. <laughs> It's such a shocking realization when that time or what I thought that time might come that you're like, oh, my gosh, this is a this is the new chapter in my life that I wasn't expecting just now. I was planning for it to be later on. Right. But now it's now it might be now. Luckily, he's in rehab right now and he's improving every day. And hopefully within a few months of rehab, he'll be back to 100 percent. Great. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, man, when it really shocks you, Mm -hmm. obviously, in the time and it really tests you in ways that you don't expect and um 
Yeah, just appreciation. Yeah. Appreciation is the one of the first steps of, sure. of prepping yourself for those moments. Have you ever heard of the Tibetan Book of the Dead? No, I have not. Okay. It's based in Buddhism, okay. basically. And there is uh, the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, which is almost like a translation of that for like modern day or Western cultures. Mm-hmm. And in it, it talks about how it's important to think about death uh, more often than not because – Otherwise, it's going to be such a surprise to you that when it comes, you'll be just devastated. You won't be able to handle it. You'll be yeah. emotionally all over the place. And it's important to prep for those kind of things. You know, even um, in Eastern cultures, they kind of prep for it younger. You know, they keep rem- not yeah. reminding but talking about it with their kids and as they get older just so you don't ignore it. And yeah. I feel a lot of times in our culture especially, in our generation, you don't really think about death. Yeah. You know? It, it's treated as more of a joke now. Yeah. In fact, I think – like it is, it is depressing, but it's like you kind of have to think. Yeah, you're right. You have to think about it a lot, so it doesn't like surprise you. Um, and it is, it's hard to think about, and it always gives me that pit in the stomach of, and you know that all that anxiety. But I think it's yes, yeah, and that's why I'm like, now's the time that you spend with the people you want to spend your time with. And Absolutely, I, that's again, it's really important to do that, and that it all kind of connects together. That it, yeah, everyone's gonna die, not a big deal. Everything's going to end eventually. Yeah. That that happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and obviously I'm getting a little, um, what would you call it, like uh, existential here? That's fine. Um, On this show, we, we go through that quite often. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, obviously there's the whole thing about the universe. We're not going to be able to explore other galax. not I don't know if it's galaxies or universes, but there's the whole thing with the whatever dark matters it's closing in on us and we're not no matter how fast we go we're not gonna get to the next universe everything's gonna i don't know i don't know i don't know what like yeah how to grasp singularity i forgot what, it, what exactly what it means but something about that mm. everything's gonna reset theoretically and it's not I, gonna I've, matter. I've read i've read three theories i think mm-hmm. one of them is the idea that um uh there is like at the center of our universe there's some kind of super massive Black hole. Uh, black hole that's yeah. eventually going to suck everything back into singularity mm-hmm. or that uh, we are going to keep expanding infinitely or that we're going to keep expanding and slowing down until everything stops moving and basically everything's going to lose energy. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, those are the three ones I've read. I don't know if any of those correlate with what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, yeah, kind of. Okay. Sort of. Yeah. It's a complicated subject that it I don't is. know anything about, and I've just read off I, articles. I, yeah, I pretend like I know a lot about <laughs> it. Like I'll, I'll list those things, and then they'll be like, "So, uh, what about this?" And I'll be like, "Um, it sounds interesting." You know, I always think about that that kind of stuff, and it's like, okay, even if I knew the answer to that, how would that affect how I live right now? How would that would that change the way I really want to treat other people, or you know what I mean? It it kind of changes my way of um, approaching things. I used to have this kind of way of like, oh, I don't want to approach that because uh, it'll hurt, you know, my self-confidence or maybe it'll embarrass me. I'm kind of getting that I don't care feeling and not in like a a careless way. Right. But like in a way that either I'm going to regret not doing this or I'm just going to do it because why not? And I think it's kind of fun to just let yourself loose and just do whatever you want to. Like I... I'll, I'll go up to certain people now and I'll be more free with all of that. And I think it's, it's kind of helped me a lot. And I know, I don't, I know thinking about regret a lot is a bad thing and regretting not to do this and stuff, but so far it's helping me. And Great. I, I'm having a fun time just kind of doing whatever I want to. So. It's going to, it's going to help with acting too. Yeah. I, improv helped me a lot during my high school time too, because mm-hmm. I performed a lot of improv and it made me not scared to take a choice and look stupid or right. like, oh, that didn't work. Okay, that's okay. We'll try yeah. it another way. Like you're not humiliated or anything like right. that. You know, it's like you took a choice. It didn't work. And then eventually you'll start learning, oh, I know this choice will work. Mm-hmm. And it does work. And you're like, cool, awesome. On yeah. to the next, <laughs> you know. And I think the, the the fear of failure is a big thing. Mm. And that's a lot of people's fears. To me, I kind of like embrace failure because mm-hmm. obviously – Fail, failure is the thing that helps you grow, mm-hmm. and that's important to know. We're talking about a lot of things that are important to know, but that's also important to know, and it, it's helped me a lot, and I'm continuing to fail so I can learn from those failures 
and build myself up to be a better person. Whether there are situations that I'm like, oh, whatever, it'll be fine, and then it wasn't fine. I learned from that. I my my decision was a failure, but I learned from that, and I won't do it next time. Yeah, there's some there's a, in the book called Mastery. They talk about whenever you are not naturally good at something, and you have to struggle and fail a bunch of times to get good at it. Mm-hmm. That person usually knows and understands that thing better than someone who's naturally good at it because it's in their bones. They yeah. know like that saying a thousand ways not to do that thing and the one way to do it, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, man, that's a great mindset to have. Thank you. Um, where do you think you've gotten this type of attitude and perspective on life from what, what things or from what people or from what experiences? Because I don't think most 14 year olds have that. Mm-hmm. And that's just a, uh, j- j- uh, very ignorant judgment on my part, but that's just a guess I have. Well, yeah, you might. I don't know. I, I only know half of my generation. I don't know how everyone is, but because when I see the <laughs> the followers of Logan Paul and mm-hmm. Jake Paul, which not a fan of, yeah, um, of little Tay of uh, you know that all I, that stuff. Like, I learned about who that was a couple days ago. I'm like, that's I'm... a ten year old girl, and you're teaching her that, like, yeah. And then it just makes me scared for future generations. Yeah. That's all, man. Yeah. Like, so anyway, where did you where do you think you got in, in all this life perspective that's mm-hmm. that's so early on? Um, well, I think part of it actually uh comes from my parents. Not that they're telling me that everyone in my generation is an idiot, but their kind of helpfulness and obviously parents I keep saying obviously. I don't want to say it, but I keep saying it. I know. Isn't that the worst? Yeah. <laughs> I say you know a lot. You know? Yeah. You know? You know? You know? You know. <laughs> I used to say this too. Really? <laughs> really? Really? And then finally my old uh, Taekwondo master, uh, because I was working for him uh, off hours, like mm-hmm. doing clerical work and stuff like in his, the Taekwondo office. He'd go, hey, man, you say really a lot. You know that, right? And I was like, no. Really? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. yeah uh, you know? Yeah, you know. Obviously. Clearly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, your parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got I got I got to thank my parents for that. And I I have a lot of time to myself, which I'm thankful for, and I kind of use that to think a lot and keep hitting the mic. I know. You're learning. I'm You're learning. Just, yeah, I'm learning from failure. <laughs> it's that's my mindset right now. <laughs> and slowly but surely i'm kind of developing my outlook on life i'm right. doing a lot of thinking i'm thinking about death sometimes and thinking about the grand scheme of things good and i know i have to live in the moment but i i do that when i need to great and for the for the rest of the time i just kind of do whatever thinking i'm gonna do i'm thinking yeah. like is it ethical to make this choice does it benefit me or the other person does it help me with this or does it help them with that it's right. all I, I think about these decisions and I think about how they'll play out in my head. And if it goes the completely wrong way, then I'll be like, whatever, probably should have thought of that. And, right. And then I just dwell on past mistakes and learn from them. Exactly. Dude, you've got such a good head on you. I mean, Thank you could you. be making all this up, but that's fine. No, <laughs> like, no, I'm, I'm totally kidding, I hope man. Not. I'm, I I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you, man. Um, uh, no, seriously, I think that this is going to prep you. Um, and I hope you always stay grounded like you are mm-hmm. because, you. as you know, a lot of young actors in this business, right. uh-oh, <laughs> they get into their late teens, yeah. you know, or, and then they get into their young 20s, and then it's like a train wreck. Mm-hmm. Dude, um, yeah, always, if I see you ever in the future and you've changed, I'll be like, hey, you changed. Just changed. letting you know. Yeah, tell me. Tell yeah. Because I have a lot of people looking out for me to see if I changed. And I hope I don't because I truthfully – I look around and I don't want to bash on anyone, but like, I look around and I just, I'm I'm a little I'm a little disappointed at what people are trying to do because we're advancing in technology and we're finding all these you know cures for diseases and people want to be SoundCloud rappers and <laughs> flex their supreme clothes and stuff. And I have a I, I know a few people who like buy supreme clothes and then sell them, which I'm fine with that because that's kind of a road to entrepreneurship in a way yeah. kind of and i think it's kind of smart they're making money at a young age and i think that's good but i i do think that i don't know i'm a little i don't want to say disappointed cuz i'm 14 i'm a part of the generation but 
I, there are people like my friends, um, his girlfriend had a party and it was like a bunch of freshmen and yeah. they're all doing whatever they're doing. They're like vaping with their tools. And, <laughs> I don't know, drinking or whatever. Yeah. I just, I'll me tell you, and, me and my friend, sorry, um, me and no, my no, friend ahead. are just like looking around and we're like, what is this? Like, we don't, we don't relate to these people at all. Yeah. We don't do any of that. And we just kind of sat in the corner and we were like, okay, so what now? And they're like, just doing whatever, listening to their mumble rap. And mm -hmm. I, again, all these people could change. Maybe they're great on the inside. I don't know these people. Right. So I, I could have a horrible perception on them, but that's just my guess. Well, it, not to take away from your perception, perception, it is your unique experience looking mm -hmm. at them, and so they are on their journey, though, yeah, as well. Of course, I think every generation has those disappointments with their own generation, yeah. especially with whenever there's real problems going on, there's real issues, serious issues, and people don't understand the the weight of the stakes mm -hmm. that that that's happening, you know. When you take away a good education from somebody, when you take away the ability for them to have clean water, when you take away the ability for them to have a job, you're ruining a human being and their family. Mm -hmm. And people are doing that right now, knowingly, right. who are in power. And so I feel like a lot of times when some people are in these situations, for instance, mm -hmm. they turn to these things as distractions. Because yeah. they don't want to face them or they can't face them or they feel like there's no way out and this is their only option. It's sad. You know what right. I mean? And I don't have a solution <laughs> to it. I'm not that smart. Yeah. But the only thing I can say is taking it one day at a time in my own world and trying to make that positive change from what I can change, from what I can control. You know, uh, One of the reasons I was telling my Susanna why I love doing this podcast is I love bringing on great people. And just having these awesome conversations that feed the soul, that give yeah. you a different perspective on stuff and sharing it with people so that they better their, their lives. Yeah. Um, it's not only just for me to like publicize <laughs> myself, you know what I mean? Which is great. You know, it helps. Good in its own right. Yeah. yeah but that's not the main focus. That's, good. that's the, the after effect. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because if the conversations aren't good, the public the publicizing of myself won't be oh, good either. Yeah, Exactly. Um, Unless, of course, you're mumbling into the microphone. To, right. To Why well, am I Yeah, I'm not being bad. Yeah. So now that you're over, you're done with school? Um, well, I'll be done with school in like a week and a half. What's so. the plan for the summer? What do you want to do during summer? Um, it's summer break. Yeah. I forgot what summer break feels like. Because for me, I'm always on summer break as an actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're, you're kind of lucky because did you grow up in like a smaller town, like a... Yeah, somewhat small town. Okay. Not, so. Nothing like – it was nice suburban. Yeah. Good. Less than a million people, way right. less, like 750. Okay. 750,000, not 750. Right. That's – Yeah, it's yeah. way too small. Way too small. Um, but you kind of live close to your friends maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I live in LA and everything here is so like spread out. So it's hard for me to just walk to my friend's house. Like it takes – it would take me two or three hours to walk to my friend's house. So I need yeah. someone to drive me there. Um and stuff like that. And to me, to my my friends and I, it's easier for us to just, you know, especially on, like, weekdays because then we don't have to, like, go over to each other's houses and then have to drive 30 minutes to get back to our own houses. We, like, kind of do the thing I mentioned earlier. We'd get on calls, play games together, and we'd all have our own separate equipment. And, yeah, it, you know, it would work. But it's, like, there's not that much of a easy way to get to my friends anymore unless you count uber but that's like paying to get Dude. driven somewhere and that's crazy on its own <laughs> i was so lucky growing up well my parents uh we, you know we had a yard and my one of my best friends at the time lived literally two three houses down uh call him up on the the kitchen uh phone that was connected to a landline no yeah, right. cell phones right hey can you play hey you want to go play like ride bikes We'd ride our bikes to the neighborhood, into the we had a creek behind our house. Oh, what is it with creeks? Let's just break this down. Creeks. Growing up, mm -hmm. if you had a good childhood, you lived near a creek. Okay. I, I feel I feel um, like that's I feel like that's majority of people. I had a bad childhood then. Okay, you didn't well uh, not all. How about that? Okay. 
a good okay. number of people who've had good childhoods, like growing up, playing outside, live by a creek. Right. Something okay. about creeks. Something about creeks. I think I'm onto something here. You might be. <laughs> no, but uh, we, we were so lucky. We played outside. Uh, our brothers, like I had two brothers, obviously, mm-hmm. and then he had his brother, and we played like like weird pickup games of touch football, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or rollerblading. Um, yeah. It was just soccer, like – there's something about playing outside that's so great. Yeah. And so I'm just really thankful I had that opportunity growing up. Sometimes, um, uh, yeah, sometimes I wish I was a part of that kind of thing because yeah. there are, I mean, there are, there are moments like I, I will walk to my friend's house. Like I'll get a couple friends to come to my house. And recently I walked like five hours, like making stops and stuff to get to my other, my other friend's house and oh, we'd wow. go and walk wherever. And then like, those are good experiences to me. Cause I think, Obviously, we live in a very um, – um, I'm trying to think of the word. It's like – it's a not civilized world, but we have a lot of already buildings and stuff. I get, like, oh, uh, oh, um, oh, gosh. I know what you're talking about. Right. Uh, not established. S- yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, established. I, we live in a very established world already, and everything's kind of already been explored. And right now, currently um, – I'm going to get into the games topic here, but my favorite game is the new Zelda, uh, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is all about exploring, and that's kind of prompted me to do more exploring on my own, and although I don't have these mountainous ranges, like big mountain ranges to explore with cool things in them, I do have friends that I can hang out with and walk wherever, and I think those are the most fun times I have, is just exploring and my friends will be like, mm, that, that's a little far. I'm like, no, it's not. Let's just walk. Like, yeah. <laughs> me and my friend once walked 10 miles from, like, El Segundo to Palos Verdes. And, like, we walked all the way down south. And it that's was great. Like, it, it was, like, so hard on my legs. But it was just fun. We it, were just talking and walking for hours. And then his mom got mad at us because it was really dark out. And it was – we are far. <laughs> you know, I think there's something about – and I'm just going to speak from the the the, the young man mm-hmm. perspective, um, the the adolescent boy, if you will, because I can't speak from the adolescent girl because I'm not one, <laughs> right? And uh, I don't have any sisters. <laughs> I don't either, so I know yeah. where you're coming from. I think um, I've done that before, where my I didn't tell my parents. Me and my friend were walking from our ta- home from our taekwondo class, and they yeah. got worried. They didn't yeah. know where we were, and we were just walking back to his house because we we're like, it's about a mile. Let's Whatever. just walk. Yeah. We didn't tell anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Stupidest thing to do, right? before cell phones or any of that stuff. But there's something I think in the adolescent boy that needs that independent. Yeah. I want to break free. Yeah. That's what I felt a that's lot a of during qu- my, that's a qu- that's a good queen song. Break free. I want to oh, break free. Don't listen to queen. Actually. I've heard I, of them. Well, queen's my favorite. So. Yeah. That's, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. It's, you know, we're, we're, our, our music tastes are like parallel. Like they never meet, but they're just, they're I'm there. trying to think, Oh, I like Boston. Yeah, yeah. One song from Boston, More um, Than a Feeling. That's yeah. the only song I like. There you go. Fair we, met br- we met briefly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, there's this break free or independent spirit that I think, you know, you're changing. You're, 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 you've yeah. started to become a man. Mm-hmm. You know, your, your brain is developing in a certain way. The chemicals being released in your body that have not been there before. Um, your perspective on the world is changing. The world around you is changing. So you in turn are constantly changing. Right. Your life experiences are getting more intense. Mm-hmm. Um, stuff that had me- certain meanings to you before are changing as well. You yeah. see them in a different light, in different perspective. Sometimes they become more positive. Sometimes they become more negative. So you're constantly getting this intake of information into your brain and you're always trying to process it and trying to figure out who you are at the same time. Yeah. And you wonder why so many adolescent teens are – don't want to talk to anybody or want to break free or become independent because they're just trying to find themselves. And that's why I think exploration, yeah, finding the world around you is yeah. so important for a young man. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I can't speak. I think it's important for a young woman as well. Yeah. But I can only speak from the young man's perspective because that's <laughs> what I was experiencing. Yep. Unless I was a young woman growing up. I, don't, well, I, I was not know. a young woman growing up. Yeah. Me neither. So far. So far. We'll see. I don't we'll know. see what <laughs> mutations happen whenever a solar flare hits. Yeah. How, dude. <laughs> How about that for a story? Hmm. Soul, Soul flare, flare hits. Yeah. Men become women. Women become men. So it's like Freaky Friday, but like, but that's like a gender swap. Gender swap, okay. but it's a permanent change. Oh, permanent. Yeah, permanent. 
That would be hey, uh, I'll copyright that. <laughs> Wyatt We Sam. Yep. Productions. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> WW Productions. Double W. Double. Yeah. Double U. Double U. W. I, I had this on my old podcast. My old producer hated when I said this. Did you know it's easier to say world or it's quicker to say worldwideweb.com than www? World Wide Web. It's one syllable. W W W. Mind blown. Yeah. You're welcome, Wyatt. Thank you. That's all the time we have. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's it. We end on that note. All right, bye. That's a weird podcast. They went so deep and then they ended <laughs> they it on the on weirdest Wide note. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. So you're born and raised in LA? Uh no. Oh. I mentioned earlier I'm uh, from oh, Chicago. That's right. Oh shit. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah. <laughs> 2016. I worked on a pilot in Chicago for three weeks. Okay. And then I worked on another pilot later okay. on that year for three weeks as well. Cool. Love the city. It's great. Again, they put me up in a nice hotel downtown. Uh, I was by the lake, uh, mm-hmm. by the park. Uh, yeah. Uh, There's multiple. Millennium. North of Wrigley Friday. Field. Oh, then I don't know. West of Wrigley Field. Sorry. No. Highland. That big, not where the zoo is. Wait, oh, shoot. Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember now. Oh, the pier. That famous pier. That oh, park. Yeah. Navy Pier, Millennium Park. Navy Pier. Navy Pier. Millennium. Millennium. Wait. But yeah, let's just. Let's is just it called park. Millennium Pier? Park. No, no, there's, there's Millennium Park and there's Navy Pier. Yeah. It, the, the pier is called Navy Pier, right? Yes. I, I was near Navy Pier about three miles away. Okay. In a nice hotel. For three okay. weeks. See, and that's, then not, the that's not near in L.A., though. That's, like, pretty far. <laughs> three miles. Maybe not three miles. Maybe two miles. Two miles. Yeah, that's just yeah, two miles. Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm, 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 that's all the time we have for the show. <laughs> <laughs> just keep just making keep, that joke. Just, just keep I've done that joke so many it's times. It's a running right? joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yeah, Michael. Okay. Now you Thank turn you. on your <laughs> mic, Michael. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, no, Michael's the best. Um. Yeah, no, I love Chicago, man. It's nice. It's like the best of L.A. and the best of New York plus yes. the best of the Midwest. Yep. Yep. It's the it's the people that really make Chicago what it is. And obviously everything else in, like, the buildings and everything is great too. But, like, you go into a bar, you're going to make some friends. Obviously, yep. I never had that experience. I moved when I was seven. Um, but we used to live on a block with all of our friends, and we'd have block parties. And Nice. You know, in Chicago, you know all of your neighbors. You know everyone, every house that surrounds you. Michael knows what I'm talking about. But in L.A., I don't know my neighbors at all. Yeah. Like, I I, I couldn't tell you who lives next to me. And See, it's I, a little sad. I made a point where I live to make sure I know my neighbors. And okay. we're, we're all friendly with each other now. Good. Because I hate that feeling. Especially where I live. I feel like, hey, we need to have each other's backs. Yeah. Something happens. Do you know what I mean? That's how that's how we roll. I I feel I feel like it's like a little late to introduce ourselves to the neighbors. We've been living where we are like a year now. Do it. it. Maybe. I know it's going to be weird. Even say it's weird. Hey, I know this is weird. I've been living here for a year. I don't know who you are. Hi. I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to go up to the people right next to us cuz oh. um they they don't like us that much. I don't think they were complaining that we made some noise even though they had construction going on in their house for like the past couple of months. Eh? Yeah. You serious? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't want to talk to them. <sighs> That's fine. That's what I'm saying. You know, some people are very interesting, mm-hmm. especially after this incident with my father. I've realized it just amplified the things that are really important in my life and the, thing, the other things that don't matter. All the material things, yep. money, it's all a tool. Mm-hmm. Money is a tool to help you better your life, better the people around you, get you things that can enhance yourself or, or help people. Yeah. That's all it is because you can't take it with you when you die, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's always important to keep that in your mind, especially. Well, maybe you can. What? We, maybe you can. We don't know. To take the money yeah, with know. your diet? You never know. I just never know. I, I can't tell if you're serious. <laughs> I'm just, you never know. <laughs> you know what? I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm very, there are very few things I'm 100% sure of. That That's, that's one. one thing I'm okay. 100% sure of. Okay. Don't know anybody who's been able to transfer their bank account to their next life. You're probably right. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, man. Uh, I just feel like it's so unhealthy to just want to accumulate things just for the sake of having things. Collections are interesting. Like people have co- like um, stamp collection. I know that's I, so. I used to have like a keychain collection. Okay. It was like 
this big. It's like this big. It's like a, it's a ball of keychains. Yeah. Goes, sh- 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 Why do well, like? I'm not like judging you by it. No, like no, what? Not. What compelled you to collect keychains? I was like five. Oh, okay. I, mean, no, 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 no. I don't know. I just do you have anything like, you collect now? Not, not really. Um, okay. I mean, I, I used to have a lot of collections when I was younger. One was key cards because we like kind of we used to travel a lot more than we do now. But like every time we'd go to a hotel, like we, I'd take the key card, and I have like a box of like fifty key cards. Oh, so yeah, that's really interesting to me. I, I I've kind of been doing that more than I have with the keychain one, but it's definitely like every time I go to a hotel, I keep the key card. I don't do it anymore, but I have this yeah little box and it's filled with key cards i am on a binge of things like especially going through my parents house right now they have so much junk oh my god mom if you i know you're listening to this mom hi mom uh why it says hi uh we need to clean your house you and dad's house and uh me and my brothers are going to make a trip down there to uh, is this my camera all of them are your camera oh, okay which one is he on right now he's on the middle one all right which you need to move closer to oh yeah i've been uh you've been not been it the whole time so I get two on me then. You got two on you. That's okay. At least there's one on me. Okay. I'm a lot. So <laughs> you were gonna say something to the camera? No. No, I was just. You're I just was wondering. just wondering. Oh, you're just wondering. Okay. Because we have four cameras. I know this one. I don't. I don't like. Go, <laughs> this okay. is because it's, it's in a, the it's weirdest a, position. For it's a our bit show. of a weird angle. It is. It, it works for other people's shows because this is used by a lot of uh, other shows. Right. Which oh by the oh, way, okay. if you ever. Like morning shows, mm-hmm. best morning show is the Brett Davern show. You should check it out. Well, you do have two, three. I'm telling you, three, one of the best morning four, shows I've ever been four. on. No joke. Is um, it? you know, I've been on this b- a lot. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's one, two, four. three. Um, there's four. There's four. 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 Yeah. Four. Um, that means it's really good. It is. It's like a four. We only got on two a scale posters. Of four. And I'm complaining right now oh, okay. to the Brett Davern show and you, to Adobe. You need more. You need more. To Nice Guy Digital, I want more posters. <laughs> more posters, please. I want more pictures of my head with stuff coming out of it, as you can see. That's a good, that's good. <laughs> it's Buddha. Oh, I, the, yeah, I see it now. Film. Well, cause... I mean, I saw the Buddha before, but like we were talking about it, so it's like, it makes sense. Now. Right, yeah. <laughs> oh, like, can the camera see this? Yeah, the camera can see this. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, the SAG AFTRA statue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, octopuses, I think, are very cool, very yeah, smart. They're pretty cool. Oct- excuse me? Don't ever correct me on my show. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I can't be mean to you, even as like for a split second. Even if I'm joking, you're you're too too nice. Too nice. Um, a tiger is one of my favorite animals. Nice, awesome. Deer, baby elk. I want to go hunting someday. Hunt for my food. Okay. So I appreciate it more. Okay. Mountain. I like running on the mountain. Runner. Okay. I love gardening. So did you like kind of? Samurai, because I'm really into the samurai. That's cool. Code of ethics. Did you? Um, so, are you gonna, like, I don't know. I don't actually. I, I I was about to pretend like I know anything about samurai, but I don't. They, don't they like commit suicide after like they lose a battle or something. That is uh, a possibility for what okay. they used to do, for sure. Um, <laughs> I love how that's your. <laughs> I don't know. Like that seems to be the most popular one. Honor was really important. And if right, you like yeah. study their uh, history and their code of ethics, mm-hmm. uh, their I think it's Bush, Bush, Bushido, right? Bushido mm-hmm. code. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a code of how you should live your life, and all of it is like set, like seven or eight virtues of how a person should live, and they're all like wonderful virtues. Okay. And that's what they always try to strive for, hmm. and a very disciplined life, a life of servitude. Did you know samurai means to serve? No. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So um, it's something that I think is very important for people. Um, individuals to be of some service either to their family mm-hmm. to their community uh, to people in need I think that's it, it, it gives your life better purpose I believe good it was eight uh, official ones but there are also associated virtues with which there are three so okay. you were right both ways oh. I guess I, I've studied it way more than I should have probably <laughs> <laughs> if the, my friends who are listening to this who know me they're like I'm surprised he doesn't have like a samurai tattoo on his back or something not yet uh, no I can't I, <laughs> no. I'm, I just don't want to deal with the cover-ups and there's this great story i have with my grandpa who didn't wasn't a fan of tattoos and he was a very pious man and i just i love him and respect him dearly he passed away a long time ago but um i might as well tell you the story 
So I was born and raised in, uh, born in Syria, raised most of my life in Oklahoma. Okay. And uh, my I was visiting one summer, and you know we were like eleven, whatever, and stick on tattoos. Me and my cousins, we were all putting on stick on tattoos, and I had this really badass demon like skull, and right. I was like, oh, that's mine. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I got it, I put it on, and I was like, my little skinny arms, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so like looking back on it, like, uh, anyway. But it, it was it was cool. It, it was cool. cool to me. Good. Everybody was wearing them on my cousins. Anyway, my my grandpa pulls me aside. I was his favorite. Oh, pulls me aside and he goes, "This is you know, it's not, you know, it's not good to have tattoos." Oh. And he's like, "You should take it off." And I was so hurt by what he said. I was so like, start crying. For no reason, like just, just, just cry. cry, like oh, I want to get my tattoo. You know what I mean? Like just c- come on. <laughs> and um, as I was growing older, I for me, I don't mind people who have tattoos. I really no, don't. Yeah. But I understood it a little better as to why. And I was like, you know what? If there's something I really want on my body to like as a reminder or as a symbolism, I actually really don't really want it on my body. Okay. I kind of just want to have it in my mind and 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 live it more than anything right um and plus i know me mm-hmm. i go through phases of things i like and i don't like and i'm scared that if i get a tattoo a year later i'm like eh, why did i do that <laughs> you know what i mean even if it's a cool tattoo and then with acting hey don't want to deal with the cover-up don't want to come in an hour early just to cover up a tattoo yeah i that's just me personally I think tattoos are awesome. I follow a bunch of tattoo accounts on my Instagram. So I live vicariously go. through other people. That's, That's a tattoo story from Wassamkish. Quiche. Good, good <laughs> story. I love saying my name wrong just because it's fun. Wassam. 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 Wass- did, you, Wassim? did you have any of those in school? Uh, any of those what? Like uh, mispronunciations. Like... All the time. Okay. Even in casting offices. I, I know... When they're about to call my name, they do this little bit. They, they're they're usually in a fast pace, right? And they'll be like, "Okay, um, uh, we Sam, right here. Awesome, thanks. Cool, we Sam. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Good. Yeah, you don't have to put them through the embarrassment. No, usually I don't. No, it's usually, fine. usually, usually depends what project it is. Right. Okay. Um, while I don't know, this just popped into my head. Uh, let's just give a special shout out to Brandy. Yes, of course. If she's hi, Brandy. Brandy is an outside awesome person in general. She is our PR rep. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute, I'm I, that's redundant. I should just say publicity rep, or she's our PR person. Yeah, publicity rep person. <clears throat> publicity. She's our PR. Yeah, she's a, public wait, wait. relations. Actually, oh, it's public relations. Oh, I'm an idiot. This is why. This is why I need you, Michael. Sometimes to correct me. This is why there's literally Google in front of you. <laughs> But I know you didn't have to Google that because you're so smart. <laughs> She's awesome. Yes, Special shout out to um, Brandy. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I don't know why that popped into my head. I just wanted to give her a shout out. Right, oh, Brandy? Oh. We see Brandy's hand through the window. Yeah. Um, there it is. There She's it still is. alive. That's good. Hi, Brandy. Good. good. We, um, that's actually how we how I got in this show because the, the, the Infinity War thing. And yep. then we met there and Brandy's like, you should go on. With Sam's world, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And now you're here. I am, and you're still alive, which is good. Hopefully. Um, first of all, uh, just to talk briefly about it, because I think it would be unfair if we didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, great job in it. Thank you. I think it's very difficult for young actors to act truthfully in moments, mm-hmm. and you and your entire cast did a phenomenal job. Thank you. Um, especially with something so difficult to act with. Hey. Uh, the scary, if I'm not mistaken, scary painting lady was your, yes. uh, fear. You're correct. D- dude, dude. Yeah. If that happened to me right now as an adult, mm-hmm. I would scream and, and flail bloody murder. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That is one of the scariest things to, oh, oh, oh no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. I, I've been in a big fan of it since it first when it came out originally. Oh, okay. I saw it. Me and my mom did. Right. Gave me nightmares. Awesome. Cried when I was a kid. Wonderful. Watched it a little earlier mm-hmm. when I was older. Realized, ah, some parts are scary. Kept rewatching it and realized, not so great. <laughs> <laughs> but, but a lot of, of course, potholes. 
But but of course you gotta respect the original. I respect Tim it. Curry is phenomenal. Tim Curry's job in that role for the time period, great job. Right. Did his did his work. Mm-hmm. Um, oh man, the the kid. What is his name? And unfortunately, he committed suicide. He was um, Jonathan Brand. Yes. This. Brandis, yes. Brandis. I think so. He was in uh, Sidekicks as well. Yeah. Dude, um, he did a great job in that as well. Um, I'm trying to think. Seth Green is in it, which I was like, (laughs) oh, yeah, Seth Green is in this. It's like weird. I met him like – I forgot what premiere. It may have been Guardians 2. Okay. I think. I met him there, and I took a picture with him, and he was like, dude, this is awesome that you're working on, you know, the new It, and – it's like cool feeling that general generational shift as well as I was at a, I was at a convention. I do these conventions where I meet people and it's like, um, meet and greet. And so there are people there. And recently yeah. I got to meet the person who played the younger, the young Stanley in the miniseries. Oh gosh. I'm trying to remember the faces. Can he you pull it up, Michael? Scout. Do you mind? Yeah, that's him. You, you have to look at him when he's younger. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see. On the left. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I met him, and I was, like, mind blown. It's, like, crazy. <laughs> it's so weird, isn't it? It's a little – and it's cool because it's, like, a passing of the torch kind of yeah. thing. Um, yeah. And, he, like, he um, he works in, like, the financial part of the movie business now, if I'm correct. I may be wrong. Sorry, Ben. Um, <laughs> if he's listening. <laughs> but – We'll make him listen. <laughs> yeah, we'll make him. Um, we – he he told me that he was like watching the numbers for it and it i think it's like the second biggest opening weekend behind like deadpool and for rated r movies and he was like wow like i <laughs> this is probably a good movie then and so you know we're it's just weird talking to him and not in not in a bad way at all i th- it was like awesome yeah and i had a blast but it's just like that's like the first direct sign of way of feeling like I, I've been past the torch. I, yeah. I, I, I have been past the torch before, kind of. Like I've been teased with the torch in a way. Right, 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 right. But um, this is the first time where it's like, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's like a big thing to me. That's and awesome. I, I'm really glad I met him. That's awesome. So. Oh, just as a heads up, just keep it like in this area. Yep. I just wanted to make sure uh, I kn- we're, you're okay on time. I just want to get the thumbs up from uh, Brandy or your. We your, should be your, fine, right? Yeah, we're, we're thumbs good. up. We're good. Okay, cool, cool. I want to. I know you got a schedule and stuff, so well, um, I'm enjoying yeah, talking with you. That's why. Fine. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying being on here. So, um, so filming that. First of all, uh, I know we both know David. Yeah, David Katzenberg. worked. Yeah, Katzenberg. Yeah. Uh, he worked on Awkward. He mm-hmm. directed uh, a few episodes mm-hmm. and just. Phenomenal guy to work with. Yeah. Um, super nice and knows his stuff so, so well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just awesome you're in such good company, you know? Yeah. I remember watching the opening sequence for it, that first, what? I want to say five, five minutes. Yeah, five minutes. And just going, damn, <laughs> it looks good. Looks really visually compelling and, and, and um, sharp. That's yeah. the best way to put it. Very purposeful. Thank you. And I think that's so. And we got, we, sorry, we got to got... owe that all to like everyone who worked on it, especially Andy, the director. Yeah. He's been a big fan of the book ever since he was little. And I'm so glad that he directed it because he's like one of the perfect, one of the most perfect people who could have done it. Yeah. And I think like Andy's a great guy. He's wonderful. And I remember when we did our first table read for it. And he was talking about, again, how it was like his one of his favorite books of all time, and that that was also kind of a realization to me. Like, if you work hard enough, you can do something like that. You can look up to something in your right. childhood and then work with that something later. Yeah, and it's crazy to think about that. And I'm, I'm like, wow, what a, what an experience. Yeah. It's it's so lucky and so rare. Yeah. And you're so lucky to be in such good company. And I hope that your future projects, you continue to work with people like that. Yeah. And you Thank find you. yourself even more artistically. Maybe you want to branch out into directing or writing or producing, you know, keeping those options open. Right. You know, I feel a lot of times uh, uh, people like, no, no, this is what I was meant to do. This is what I need to do. Yeah. And whenever a 
career shift happens or a life shift happens, that becomes very scary because they're like, well, this is what I've, I've been planning to go here, but it seems like my path is taking me somewhere I didn't expect, which right. might be even better than where you wanted to go. Exactly. I mean, I'm kind of, I don't know if I want to do specifically acting when I grow up. Right. But one thing I want to work on, which I, this is why I need discipline is writing. Um, we know a writer and I've been kind of taken help from him and um uh i'm not doing my work on very fast i'm definitely taking my time and my mom keeps reminding me which i'm thankful for (laughs) um and i think that it's a it's a great starting point because he's been writing for tens of years and it's something about like there's a lot of, um, of things that i audition for or stories that like I'm like these these aren't really compelling like I don't feel like these are gonna be good movies yeah <laughs> and uh, I'm not naming any any of them but there there are times around like I why don't, why don't I just write something like why don't I write something that will hopefully change how people think about something maybe it'll you know change the way people see themselves or Maybe it's just a really good story. And I think that's kind of something that's a little more difficult to find, to me at least. Um, and there's there's been a couple ones where I'm like, these are awesome. And I want to write like this. And they're... Like, I get the that inspiration from auditions I go on or directors and movies. Some, some of my favorite directors right now are Taika Waititi, who did the new Thor. He did um, Hunt for the World of People and what we do in the shadows. And I met him recently. He's a, he's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I just love his kind of humor. It's hilarious to me. And, um, someone like Edgar Wright, who writes and directs his movies as well is like, he's awesome too. I love his style. I love the way he makes his films. Um, James Gunn, who does the guardians of the galaxy movies. There's just people that I'm like, I want to be that person. I want to be able to direct and write my own things and tell the stories I want to tell to the next generation, which, and in my perspective, kind of needs a little help. Yeah. <laughs> but I could be wrong. I'm probably the one who needs more help than anyone. We'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm only 14. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I ha- can I give you a recommendation, a suggestion? I, I kind of – man, I want to get you a book. I want to get you a book. And Michael's laughing because I brought, I've literally brought this book up in almost every single podcast I've done. Okay. And it's something that's changed my life for the better. It's called Extreme Ownership mm-hmm. by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. They were Nafee Seals. And one of the um, messages in it is discipline equals freedom, which sounds kind of paradoxical at first. Yeah. But here's what I recommend. Um, getting the book at some point and just reading it. Okay. It's real life war stories. Mm-hmm. The principles learned from them and their application to business, but they can be applied to anything. So it's it's a pretty great book. Um, now, as for the writing portion of your life, I would – I don't know if you do this or whatever, but I highly recommend that you set aside an hour a week mm-hmm. or some day, some days, an hour, and you make a goal. Like no matter how yeah. horrible it is, you got to like finish two pages of writing. Even if it's like crappy writing, cool. Just do I it. got two pages in. Let's see what's wrong with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes it's just hard. It's just getting started like that because you don't want to write crappy stuff in the beginning. Michael is a writer, actually, oh. and he's nodding his head um, in improvement, it seems like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I agree with the discipline is freedom kind of thing. Um, there are times when I feel like I'll be um, missing out on something because I'm like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this or I want to do this. And then. I'm like, oh, I don't have time for writing now, and you know, there's all that, and I, like, especially with me with um, with school, like, I I'm not that busy of a guy right now, <laughs> but there, it's just like going to school for seven hours, and I'm like, okay, now I just want to relax for the rest of the day, and not have to work or anything, right? And then, you know, I I don't take advantage of that time, which I need to do, and I think that that'll that's something I just need to learn, and I keep stalling on it. And I know I, I will keep stalling on it and even after this interview. 
Hey, right don't thing. stall on it. Okay. Quiet. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna stop stalling. <laughs> That's simple, isn't it? <laughs> what? I'm teasing you, man. I'm teasing you, man. I can't. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> um. <laughs> no, no, no. So, but yeah, it's hard. It's super hard. I think it, it's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. You know what I mean? Uh, but, but you said school is almost done, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so you maybe, might have yeah, some time in the summer, summer. right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's good. Perfect time to go do some writing and just flex my writing muscles, which I've never, you know, done before. Yeah. And write some pretty bad stuff. Yeah. Well, you're not scared of failing, like, no, like I said I'm earlier. Not, so. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'll, I'll write something and I'll be hesitant to share it with someone because it's probably really bad. But I think um, obviously you need your own self-critique, but even sharing it with peers you know and having them tell your you know having them give you their opinions right 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 is important like i did a i I wrote a little essay not essay it's more of like a script for like a thing okay about if you saw a quiet place um it's about like the ending to that there's a lot of people who didn't like the ending and i wrote a thing on it and that about why i liked it yeah and then I had my friends go over it and stuff like that. And it's interesting to see what they think I should change and what I think I should change. Like, I'll go over it and I'll be like, I don't like that. And then that kind of yeah. thing. And I, that's my first, like, kind of writing piece that I've had, like, personal, like, my my personal self put into it. Like, I'll write essays for school, obviously, and I'll have my teachers correct them. But this is my, this is the first thing that comes from my mind that I've had like others really read and peer review. Yeah. And it's it's an interesting process. It's super interesting. Um I think it's so oh, gosh. It's hard sometimes, man. You know, hearing other people's feedback like oh this yeah. is wrong, or, you know, cuz then you start taking it personally like am I like you know like it's hurtful almost and then right. uh, that's why I'm careful who I give my stuff to, yes. you know. Um I have a handful of people that I hang out with in general mm-hmm. and within those handful of people, I'm like, I want this person to read this. Cause I'm curious. Cause I know the certain type of perspective they have on life and I know they won't lie to me even if it's bad. You yeah. know, there's a great, uh, it's not even a book. It's not even a short book. It's more of like an essay. It's mm-hmm. called lying by Sam Harris. Um, another book I highly recommend. A lot and, of books and I'm not a reader. So, Oh, I'm a big reader and I've become a reader <laughs> after college and, mm-hmm. and living on my own. I never thought I'd l- read as much as I have by myself i know it sounds crazy yeah but i've learned more living these eight years in la by myself than i have when i was eight years in high school and college just what it is hey crazy things happen and i'm used to that yeah now, kind of yeah spending a whole summer with you know some friends making a movie basically being paid to do summer camp is great right i had a blast and it turned out to be a pretty good movie apparently <laughs> It's not bad. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not too bad. <laughs> hey, by the way, the film, yeah. that's what I, for, I forgot I was going to mention about it. Mm. I loved how bloody it was. Yeah. I love that they didn't shy away from that. Good. Especially the opening sequence where the yeah. kid gets his arm ripped off. You're like, oh, they're showing all of it. Yeah. Excellent. I think y- you can't do a Stephen King movie without showing that. <laughs> it's hard to. It's really hard because if you, if you can't handle those first five minutes, then... I don't know how you're going to handle the rest. Like, you got to yeah. show it to them real, kind of real. I mean, they use some some VFX for that, but <laughs> right? You got to show them we're not going to we're not going to go soft on anyone here cuz right. there'll be movies where they're like only do horrible things to adults. But no, this is yeah. real. This is gritty. This is yeah. This uh, is a kid getting his arm ripped off and being dragged into the sewers kind of thing. Yeah, uh, one of the scenes that kind of like I sh- shook me in a way just because of what's going on in the world. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, man, I have to forget. Uh, spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it. Oh, just, sorry. Yeah, spoiler. Pa- uh, pause. P- pause it and then watch it and then come back. Yeah. But spoiler alert, I'm going to say something. Um, towards the end where the clown is like his little brother and then he yeah. shoots him in the head with something, right? The stun bolt. Yeah, the stun- yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that's so disturbing to watch a you know, kid just get his head. And then I'm like, oh, it's the monster. It's the monster. It's the monster. Yeah. I, I, th- th- those are sequences in, in movies. And it's done well here where you're like, okay, 
that was really disturbing to watch, but that was the whole point because it's the monster and he has yeah. to, that must have been so hard for the character to do oh, that. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, it's just a mind bender to say the least. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, just to wrap things up. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to have you on at some point again. Awesome. I'd uh, love to be on again as well. Yeah. Uh, to plug your next project or whatever it is, mm-hmm. or just because if you're ever bored and or you. <laughs> I'll just come in when you're doing someone else. Yes. Yeah. Replace them. Oh, better yet, you can read your script that you've been working on. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just um, <laughs> Thousands of people. Just listening. like without, yeah, just without any warning, I'll just walk in and then yep. just sit down on the mic and start reading. Oh, oh, guys, it's Wyatt. Uh, okay. Wyatt, all right, here all right. we go. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Can so, we get a log line before you start, Wyatt? <laughs> no, we're gonna just go straight into it. Just straight into it. All right, yep. all right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Wyatt Olaf. Yeah, there Olaf. You go. Olaf. Um, yeah. Olaf. Um, uh, I have a my favorite movie recommendation because I sometimes think it's harder for people to read books and yep. talk about it, but I love doing that. Uh, I will give you my recommendation of my most favorite movie. Okay. And then uh, I'll can try I give to watch you yours. Mine as well. Yeah. yeah and then we'll okay. watch them, and then so the next time we come in, we can talk a little bit about our favorite films. Great. Mine is Red Belt. Red by belt. David Mamet. Okay. Haven't heard of it. Check it out. I will. What's yours? You probably already saw it. Uh, it's kind of, it's pretty mainstream. It's Arrival with Amy oh, Adams and yes. Jeremy Renner. Let's talk about that just briefly. Like what? Yeah. Um, uh, I love the atmosphere yes. in the whole film mm-hmm. and how realistic the beginning part was. Yeah. Uh, my... Me and, me and a friend of mine, we just endlessly analyzed the movie. I think we've watched the whole thing without sound before. And it's that Steven Spielberg way of telling a story without sound, and it still works, and you still understand what's going on for the for the most part. Yeah. Um, but a uh, spoiler alert for Arrival too. But uh, three, two, one with the beginning sequence being a bookend with the end sequence. Mm-hmm. It's just beautiful, and the music that plays. It's called I think it's on the nature of daylight. daylight. You know it. Yep, it's from uh, it's from something else, Shutter Island as yeah. well, and then it's actually from another film. And that, yeah, it, I just that track is saddest track in the world. Yeah, it's so <laughs> good. Like I'll put on my headphones and I'll play it, and like be sad. I just want to cry. It's it's <laughs> so incredible. Do you ever do that stuff where you're like it's already sad, and yeah. then you'll listen to sad music to get even sadder? Yeah. Hey, why are humans so weird? <laughs> It just happens. It's just like I'm sad. I'm gonna be more sad. <laughs> well, it's easier to like listen to a sad song when like something really sad happened. Like, y- you know, you <laughs> right? You lose someone and you're like kind of just sitting there and you're trying to play like a Beatles song, like a happy Beatles song, and oh, you're okay. like, I don't like. How am I supposed to feel right now? <laughs> That's that. That it's is like weird. Weird in the middle, like. I kind of want to be happy, but I'm also, like, very deeply depressed. Yeah. So it kind of makes sense. Or somebody's playing dubstep and you're sad. You're like, yeah. hey, Can turn you not? it off. It's the worst <laughs> music to play when you're sad. It's dubstep. It's like crying. It's like overlap. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst music. Yep, I agree. Worst music to play when you're sad is dubstep. Uh, on that, we will uh, go, yeah, go, go. There you go. Dude. That's a good end. Seriously, man, I have so much respect for you, especially Thank with you. the way you ha- um, uh, have respect for your parents and your appreciation and your perspective on life at such an, a young age already. And I, I hope you. you continue to do that. Um, I hope to have you back on the show and we talk about more projects you have coming up and more life experiences. Uh, always stay grounded. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, um, I think that's it, Michael, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And if people want to find you on the Twitter and Instagram? Um, so my Instagram is just my name. It's Wyatt Olaf. And then my Twitter is fellow Wyatt. But like the, the W is combined with my name. So it's fellow F-E-L-L-O-W-Y-A-T-T. Great. W-Y-A-T-T. Thanks, man. And any uh, upcoming projects in the works or are you just um, stuff you can't talk about right now? Well, mostly it's just kind of like – uh, it's more of doing stuff in between. So, okay. like, I have a YouTube channel. I sometimes post on there. It's just my name, Wyatt Olaf. And cool. Like, I'll do skits, and I recently did a film for my school's film festival. Oh, and, nice. You know, you could just check that out and just working on different stuff like that. Awesome, man. So, yeah. Absolute pleasure having you on. Seriously. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah. Or, well, glad to be here in past tense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you're, that is. <laughs> you're awesome, dude. All right. Thank you. We're out. All right. See you guys. Hey, everybody. 
that was the show. Uh, thanks for listening. If you want to listen to actually the whole episode, because it, it didn't finish, you can download it tonight on iTunes or tomorrow morning, Friday morning, and you can listen to the rest of the good stuff that me and Wyatt talked about. What a great guy. Seriously, had a blast with him. A uh, big thanks to Adobe Radio, to Nice Guy Digital, to you, Michael. Thank you for everything that you do for the show. Thank you for our social media producers, Taylor, Ed, Aprish. Um, I'd also like to thank one more person, one more entity. Uh, that's actually Brandy, our PR person at Advantage PR. Um, uh, you're, you're pretty awesome. Thank you. And uh, thank you to our listeners. Thanks for always tuning in. And if you enjoy our show and have just literally two minutes, give us a review on iTunes. We appreciate it. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter for all the behind-the-scenes goodies and to stay up to date. Plus, it's the right thing to do. Jesus would do it. We out.